Hey, what's up? My name is Ryan. In this video, we're going to do a playthrough of Villagers on Solo Mode. Now, Villagers is all about drafting cards, which represent villagers that are going to move into your city and then placing them into your city. Now, today I'm going to be playing Shifting Seasons, which adds a bunch of cool effects that happen throughout the game, but also introduces a brand new type of solo mode called Monastery Mode. If you've never played before, I'm going to start with a shorter review of the rules so the playthrough makes more sense. But if you already know how it works, first use the chapters below and skip ahead to the playthrough. All right, I get everything set up here. Let me show you how it works. So right here we have my town. And right now, I am the only person in my town. Eventually, by the end of the game, this whole area is going to be filled up with different villagers who have moved into my city. Right here, we have the road. These are all the villagers I could draft and later place into my city. There are also a bunch of face down piles up here. This is what's going to replenish these villagers. As I draft these villagers here, I'll be flipping over the face down ones to take the spots of the ones that I draft. I can also choose to directly draft the face down ones if I see it's a suit that I like. You see the villagers come in suits of things like this here, this grazier is actually a hay suit. So if I know I want to go for lots of hay suits, I could directly draft some of these hays here and hoping I can kind of, you know, get some cool combos. Speaking of suits and combinations, the main fun thing you get to do in this game is that you build out your cities and you're going to kind of start coming out in suits. So for example, this grazer is a hay suit, but it has to go on top of a hair. You can't just put this grazer into your city. You're first going to have to get this basic villager over here called a hair, put it down, and then place the grazer on top of that card. Then on top of the grazer, it can go a milkmaid, and on top of that, another card. So the better and better cards typically have to be stacked on top of lower value card first. I'll explain more about that as we go along. One more kind of thing that happens a lot in this game is you're going to see cards with padlock symbols. These padlock symbols, you can buy them whenever you want, but if you do not have in this case, the Cooper or whatever they ask for, the Cooper, the blacksmith in your city, you're going to have to pay the bank, the reserve two coins. If there was another player, you might have to play another player as well. But if you do have that card in your city, you get to take two coins from the bank into your city. So basically you can gain extra coins off that or lose depending on whether you have the padlock unlocker in your city. And there are these basic villagers up here in the corner. I'll show you how to do this in a second, but basically most of the villagers I play will be built off these base villagers. I start with eight coins right here, and also I start with five cards. Typically, you keep the seer from all other players. Since it's solo, I will keep them face up right here. And since this is shifting seasons, let me show you how that works. There are a couple extra cards shuffled into this pile. Like the tent maker is actually an extra card in the shifting season expansion. I'll just kind of hit those as they come up. But the main thing shifting season does is it adds four seasons to the game. Typically, you score based off the score on the cards, and it happens twice in the game. You score during the first market, which is this blue card right here. So when all these cards get flipped over and the first market's exposed, you do scoring. Then you score one more time at the end of the game when all the stacks flip over at this red second market card. Now, that's normal. What Shifting Season does in the four blank spots, it adds seasons. So here's spring, summer, fall, I think autumn, and winter. And each one of those has a card underneath them for a special ability that's going to happen. This is in secret. You can peek at whenever you want. So at the end of the spring season, it's going to be when this pile gets exhausted. We're going to activate the spring season, and we're going to do the special on that card. The game actually comes with a whole bunch of other spring, summer, autumn, and winter cards. There are also some other things like Harvester Team, some different suits in the game like that, including the expansion. It's kind of modular. You can throw them in if you want to. You can throw them out. So I'm not playing with everything in the new expansion. Mostly I'm going to throw the seasons in and do the new solo mode. Now let's talk about the solo mode. This is called monastery mode. The base game had a mode that's solo where you have an opponent who's drafting cards into the city so you kind of have two cities simultaneously. This introduced what's called monastery mode. Monastery mode's a little simpler. I'm going to be drafting cards. Every time I draft a card, I'm going to discard one additional card from the road. And basically just I lose that card from the game. This over here helps to track a turn I'm on. So in this mode, there are only six turns max. And also there's this little drafting priority card, which says what card gets discarded. So for example, there's a little house right here. So if there's a one with a house symbol in the first round, that's what they're going to discard. Now you know how good you did based on basically the score system in the rule book. And I'll show you that after we don't have to play through. That's enough to go ahead and jump in and get started. I'm going to start playing my turn. I'll explain what I'm doing as I go along, and I think it'll all make a lot of sense. It's not too complicated. A lot of it's going to be drawing cards, trying to get cool combos, and play them out of my city. So in order, I'm going to start out with a draft phase. Actually, this little village square on the flip side shows you what your turn sequence is. We're going to start drafting, then we're going to do some building. So you have the draft phase. You start out with being able to draft two villagers in your turn. So I get two drafts out here, then after my draft, I'm going to go on to a build phase. So I think I'm going to start out here by drafting the grazer. And you're supposed to put it on your village square so you don't lose track of how many drafts you do. Because it can get a little confusing after you draft a whole bunch. So I drafted the grazer. We're going to get around monastery mode. Now we're going to toss something. It says first priority, toss a building. There are none. Next, toss a food card. There's a food card right there. So this one gets tossed. Now important, if you've never played before, this is the reserve. I'll be using this to refill this sometimes. But often I'm going to be using this pile right here 
to refill the cards. We're going to flip over two cards from here, and that's how we're going to eventually expose all of our market cards. Now I have one more pick this turn, and I think I'm going to take this tent maker right here. I'll put this right here. I'm going to have to throw away one more card for them. They throw away food right there, so that's going to be the throw away, so now that's so there's two discard. We refill. In fact, actually, we already exposed the spring card. So the spring is going to happen, this festivals, and I will do that at the end of the build phase. So at the end of that, I'm going to pick up the cards from the draft phase, put into my hand, and now I'm on to the build phase, and I have two build actions right now. I'm going to start out by playing this Jack of All Trades. This person here lets me basically make this a base villager. Typically, if I want to play my grazer right here, I would have to get a hair, put the hair down, and put the grazer on top of that. But this Jack of All Trades basically lets me make this a basic villager. So this can be used as a first villager in a two production chain. So here's my first villager. I'm going to put this grazer right here. And on top of the grazer, I'm going to put a milkmaid. So the milkmaid is going to give me two food symbols. I'll explain in just a second. I put this over to the side here because these base cards can often let two different stacks of cards be built on them. That's why there's a little two card symbol right there. Okay, so by playing the milkmaid, I also have to pay two coins here because it says it requires a cooper to unlock. I don't have one, so two coins are going to go to the bank. And also before I forget, every turn this road is going to clear. Unless I put a coin, I can put one coin on one card and save it. I'll put a coin on this carpenter right here, which is going to save this carpenter. I'm going to take all the other cards now and toss them. These are all gone. I'm going to replace them from the reserve. So these don't get replaced from up here, but they go from the reserve. I'm going to flip out one, two, three, four five, six cards. Okay, so there are my six cards, and now I'm gonna activate this spring event. This says festivals. It says draw three villagers from the reserve, and then return any two. So I'm gonna flip this, and I'm gonna take one of these to keep. Um, none of those are really great for me. I don't wanna to have too many milk mates, so I'm just gonna take this harvester, and I will throw it back on top. Now I'm gonna flip spring over and keep spring face down, and now I'm on to my next turn, and I get to draft two cards, right? But now I have in my city two food symbols. That means I can basically feed more mouse because I have someone who produces a lot of food. So I have two food symbols. So instead of drafting two, I get to draft four total cards. I'm going to start out here by taking this, hmm, I think I will. Then I'm going to take this carpenter right here. And then I get the coin back I put on that card because I saved that card from last one. So I got the carpenter. Now we're going to, since we're on round two, the game is going to throw away the round two priority is still building first. So there's a building right here. So this brewer is gone. I'm going to replenish both those. So one, two, that's a really good card. So this is that whole production chain thing. I use a jack of all trade for the basic hair. Here's my second level, which is the grazer. On top of that, I can put a milkmaid. And on top of that, I could put a fromage, fromager, I don't know how to say that word, but it's right there. So I will definitely be taking that card right there. They still want to throw away food. So this is going to get rid of this fissure right here. I'm going to replenish both those cards. One, two. I'm not sure what I want to take right here. I think I'm just going to take this seeker right here. And I can always use it for something else if I don't want to build it later. But I'm going to take that. They're going to throw away first priority buildings. There are no buildings. There's no food. So they're going to go to the gold. They're going to toss this card here, which is actually worth a lot of points. just kind of stinks. But it is gone. We're going to replace both those. And I get one more pick. And interesting. There's a lot of stuff out here. I think I might actually go for I'm going to do the locksmith and just see what happens with that. So I'm going to, oh, they're going to throw away this beekeeper or the venter. I'm going to have them throw away the beekeeper and I'm going to replace two cards. We have a wood carver and we have a blacksmith. I was really hoping the blacksmith would come out. So, okay, so we got all that. I'm picking my cards in my hand now. Now, I once more get to reserve a card for next turn. I'm going to reserve the blacksmith. All the other cards are going to be tossed like that. And so those are gone. I'm going to replace them from the reserve right here. All right, so we know we're going to activate the first market phase at the end of this round since this one got exposed. So I know I'm going to place one of my build actions. I'm going to put this Fromager, I said that word, on top of the Milkmaid, which is going to give me 15 points when that score. So I kind of want to get that out this turn. I also want to, I want to have him play my Tent Maker. I have a Tent Maker card that gives me two bonus build actions this turn. So that's pretty important to me. So I'm going to be able to build a total of four times. This just gets discarded when you play it. So I just get a total of four builds. There's one build. I'm also going to build both of these. Now these are both in the wood suit. So I can't just throw these down. I have to put them on a basic worker, which I haven't done this yet. But in order to get those basic workers, what you're going to do is you're going to take a card. You're going to put it face down. So I'm just going to put it right there, I think. And I want to take one of these. And this is a free build. So you get to take this out here and throw this down. So whenever you want a basic villager, you discard a card from your hand. 
You throw it away up here into the road so it will show up again in the future. And you take one of those basic villagers, you put them out here for a free action, and then you can start using them right away. So that is one, two, three builds. And I think I'm going to go ahead and throw down one more of these. I want to do this one here for one more food because I know I'm going to cover up all my foods with this. So I'm going to go ahead and put my four villagers out into my city. Again, you use this card here. You don't have to have this card. It's just there to help you count and not lose track of how many you've done, how many you've drafted. It makes a lot of sense in a multiplayer game because it's easy to lose track of how many you've done, how many you've drafted compared to other people. So two things can go in this lumberjack here. So I can put this shipwright and this carpenter down on the lumberjack. So this gives me to see these two build icons here. In the future now, every turn I get two extra builds and I have my harvester right here. So that's into that round. Now we are going to do the market phase. So the market phase activates and sets all your gold symbol score now. So I get 15 there and then two and two. So I get 19 gold, take a 20 and throw away one. All right, so now you can kind of see the strategy of the game coming together a little bit. So I'm sitting here in my hand holding two iron things in here. So I kind of like the idea of going for this wood, but here's kind of a decision I have to make. I see right now two of the ore suits right here. There's a seeker and there's a locksmith. I see a spelunker right there, which is also a good thing for me. I also see a blacksmith right there. Then on top of all that, there's an ore and an ore out there. So I see a lot of ore kind of for the taking. Actually, this is on the third page over here now. Their first priority in the third round to throw away is a gold symbol, which stings right now because I really want both these cards. The spelunker is really important for this suit right here. It can make a really cool chain with a Seeker or Spelunker, but the Blacksmith is there and I reserve my Blacksmith, but either way, if I take one, they're going to throw away the other ones. So I have to think about what I want to take this time. You know what, let's go for cool chains rather than maybe smart plays. So I would take this one here. I kind of want both, but again, they're going to throw away gold symbols, so they're going to toss my blacksmith and end up basically wasting my one coin that I saved earlier. But that is just kind of interesting. I got decisions like that. So hopefully I flip over a cool ore card. There's a mason, that's not bad, and a forager. And I just put this right here so I don't lose track of how many I've done. Um, I think I'm just gonna get this log rafter. It's not quite sure what my direction is right now. They're gonna throw away gold to first priority, so this mason's now gone. Flip out two more cards. Got a thatcher and a grocer. Yeah, I'm going to just directly draft. You can always directly draft in the road if you want. I'm going to just directly draft this symbol right here. It's a mason, not quite what I want, but not unhappy about that. The Thatcher's going to go away. Still going to replenish. I'm going to go ahead and grab, I think I want to get this Grocer. Might be kind of cool end game score. All the things with silver in here are going to activate in the second market phase. That's actually how you score most of your points the age. It's the second market phase at the end of the game, which is only like probably two turns away. And you get a ton of points from all the silver to activate. And so I'm going to go ahead and refill this. I'm going to put this on the milk main, just kind of hope that I get something really good off that. All this other stuff is going to be tossed. I'm going to replenish that with five cards in reserve. Um, I'm going to take all these cards up into my hand, and now we're going to do four build actions. So I'm going to use this mason here, return it to the pile right there to get a basic villager. Remember the basic villagers do not cost an action to do, so I'm going to do that basic villager right there. Have a miner down here, and I'm going to put, that's a free action. So I'm going to do action number one, number two right there, and then I still have two more builds. So I'm going to do this one right here. Both this one, the Spelunker, and the Locksmith both require me to pay two coins each. I'm gonna throw away my, and get my money back for that. Okay, and then I have one more build action. I'm gonna throw that one away and put it right here. And I'm gonna grab a basic Lumberjack card. I'm gonna put that Log Rafter on there. That gives me some good end game score if I get more logs. So here, it's kind of interesting. I'm gonna activate this Noble card here. It says add five coins, gold, to all face up villagers. So every one of these is gonna get a five. So basically by drafting these cards, I'm gonna get a bunch of extra points this next time, which is pretty cool. And so we're gonna go ahead and go on to our next turn now. We're on turn number four. So his first priority of tossing is gonna to be tossing a card with a silver icon from now on for the rest of the game. So there's a silver icon. That's gonna be his first thing he's gonna to toss. After that, it's gonna be gold. So I think because of that, I'm gonna start out by drafting my log rafter here. I'm gonna take this one. Now he's gonna do a gold. I can choose which one. And I think in this case, I'm probably never gonna build another Spelunker. So I'm gonna go ahead and let him toss this one here so that's gone. And then we're gonna replenish two cards. I'm gonna take this Cooper right, actually no, I think I'm gonna take the Milkmaid right here. And then he's going to get, I get to pick between all the things that have gold, so I haven't tossed the Thatcher. Sorry, he takes silver first, there's no silver, but then gold is the second priority, so there's that. And then we're going to replenish that with two cards. Now that's interesting, that's kind of what I was hoping for earlier, it's a pretty good card there, so I might take the 
Apprentice for my next draft. And he gets to pick one of these two. I'm clearly, clearly going to throw away the one that doesn't have any gold on it. Flip out two more cards. I'm going to take that one right there. He has to toss this one here. This one is now gone. We're going to replenish from... Oh, I can actually claim a card. I'm not going to claim either of these, so these two are going to be gone now. So the rules say discard any coins without coins on them. There are coins on this card, so I guess those stay up there, which isn't necessarily good because it means I'll see fewer cards. So it's not really to my advantage or disadvantage, maybe. It's just maybe how the hand plays out. Because right now, it'd be kind of nice to see more cards and more things come up that I want. Like that one. I'm really happy that jewelry came, jewelry came up because that's the ending chain for this Seeker Spelunker down here. It's worth... 20 points. That's a pretty big card right there. So take my cards up into my hands here. Okay, so I think I'm going to go ahead and put this Log Rafter down right there. That's one. I'm also going to use the Apprentice. The Apprentice lets me swap out a card. I'm going to swap out this Grazer right here and I get to return it to my hand. So that's two actions right there. And then I'm going to take this Grazer and put it down here for three. And then I'm going to put the Milkmaid on top of that for my fourth action. So that's the end of that turn right there. I'm going to activate guilds. Guild says it's three coins for every symbol you have of any one suit. So I get to pick a suit and score three for each one. So I'm going to pick what well, that's the most I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those aren't mine of theirs. So I have eight wood symbols. These have doubles on them in case you're curious about that. So eight wood, I get three for each. That's 24 bonus coins. Now this is going to move on to turn number four. Five. And just like that, we only have two turns left in the game. So I'm definitely going to take this jewelry first. That's pretty obvious. This is 10 extra coins for that one card. So I'm going to take that one. He's going to throw away this one right here because that has silver on it. We're going to replenish both those. I'm actually going to just risk it. I should put that right there. I'm going to risk it and take the hay off the top here. It's a grazer. That's actually the one I replaced over here. So it hasn't really helped me too much. He's going to throw away Mason right here. Then we're going to flip out one new card. So I'm going to take another one off the top here. He's going to throw away this one because there is a silver icon on it. And I'm going to take another one from this one. Oh, nice. Another one of those. That's a really nice draft. I think I am going to let him take this one because I don't think I'm ever going to build the Cooper. So when he takes this card, I am losing those coins. But again, I kind of want more stuff to flip out here for my last turn. So everything without a coin is now gone. So all that is discarded. I'm going to take all of my... Oh, wait. I get one more draft. Oh, no. I forgot about that. Okay, so I forgot I had one more draft here. So I should have taken, you can't draft less than your total. You have to draft at five. I can draft six, but your max is five, and you have to do your max. So I should have taken the wheeler. The beekeeper goes to the game. That would actually mean that two more cards were flipped out here. This would have been flipped out in the top card, this special. Um, I wouldn't have taken them. They both have them out here. I wouldn't have claimed them. So actually, they would have been thrown away. So those two are going to be thrown away. None of that changes, thankfully. Um, but yes, I have to take my max of five card. That is a rule in the game. So we have that. That does, though, flip over this right here, which just says all players get to do a bonus build action this time. So, okay, so right now I have four builds this turn. So I think I clearly want to put this one down. That's a pretty obvious one. I'm not going to do anything else that really helps me. I definitely want to do that one there. I don't have a lot that's going to do different things for me. So I think I need to have a basic villager. I'm going to take this one here, throw away this one. I'll grab a basic villager, which is another hair. So at some point, you start committing to one suit. So at this point, I'm going to really commit to the hay suit. So I have hay there. And I have, that one's a pretty obvious one for endgame score. I'm not going to worry about more food right now. So I will just do this Bedouin right here. So those are my four. So I'm just going to put those down. Those two go there. This one goes on the end of the jewel road track. And this one goes on the end of that track right there. And that's the end of this round. And we are on to the last phase of the game already. So... Last draft, I'd say this Peddler is the only thing out there that looks really good. Okay, this Peddler, that's one draft. The game is still going to go for silver first. So they're going to take that one. I'm going to flip out two more cards. Maybe a Wheeler in case it comes up. And then we're going to flip out this. Oh, he has to take one next. So I'm going to pick between these two. I'll just have him toss the Swine Herd. Flip out this card. Ooh, good card. And a jeweler. But I definitely want this one here. That's a very powerful card. Now we're actually going to replenish from this pile here. So we have a bed builder, and a free mason. I'll just keep committing to this one strategy right here. So I got that. He's going to toss away that. We're going to fill up here for the last draft of the entire game. I don't know. I think I'm just going to get this locksmith in case. But actually, you know what I should do? I should take the seeker right here because it gives me five coins. So I'll take the seeker. At the end of the game, they will take a victory point card which is this peddler right here. And that is actually all the drafting that's gonna happen. So I get to build 
once more. So after this build, the game will do end game scoring. So I have four more builds and the game is over. Okay, so these two are pretty obvious ones. It helped me out with my hay suit, so it's gonna be a really good combination there. I'm gonna place Engineer as well, which I'll show you in just a second. And then I'm just trying to see which of the last four cards are the most valuable. This is only that gives me a whole lot of value, but I need one more hay to do that. So I'm gonna need a total of two hay cards. I'm gonna throw away two more cards, pick up two more hayers, and put them out in my city. And then this card I won't ever need. I'll just leave it over here. And then I'm going to build two of these here this here. Then the last thing is an engineer. It basically says that every card, every symbol underneath the card is active, even if it's covered. So I'm gonna put this right here. It basically means everything under this, my Spelunker is also going to score. So I'm gonna end up here, I have to pay for a Cartwright. It's the only lock symbol, a car Cartwright and Carpenter. Hey, I finally get something cool. I pay my own Carpenter over here to help with the bed builder. So that's pretty cool. Actually, I showed in that earlier with that bed builder and I just, forgot so we got two bed builders that should happen with and i also have to pay have to pay the game the cart right i don't have a cart right so the game is going to be paid two coins for that and now we're on to end game scoring so we're going to start out here with the gold the first thing you do is just add up all the gold you see on all the cards so all these little gold circles here so 20 30 there's 30 more so that's 60 64 66 Six more, so 72. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab those 72 coins out of the bank right now. Now we're gonna move on to silver symbols. So the silver symbols are all combo-ish kind of cards. So this one here says three gold for every, three gold for every two yellow symbols I see. So I see a total of one, two, three, four. So three times four is 12. That one's down. This one says two for every lock pad, every single of these padlocks I have in my city. One, two, three, four, five, six, Six, I believe. Seven, eight, and I believe this is a typo. There's not a padlock here, but they have a requirement and have a little thing to pay. So I think they just missed the typo here. That's why I paid for that one earlier. So we got a total eight, which is gonna be 16. And that's something I don't know about. You for some reason know why there's not a padlock there and I'm wrong, let me know. But it has a little pay a carpenter or two coin thing, like all the other padlocks say who you pay. So I think it's just missing the icon. Okay, moving this way, I have this one here. It says, both these actually say, I get three coins for every two hay symbols. This is my big one. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, I have seven total combos of two. So I get three for each, that's 21. And I have two of those cards, that's 41. Then looking over here, my last thing is I have one for every log symbol. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight, and I do that twice, so 16. All right, so I say out of my coins. All right, there's 100. Right there is 50. Ooh, 50 more for another 100. All right, then 19 more, so I end up with 219 points. Which according to the rule book means that my village is the crown jewel of the country. It will be the center of everything that's awesome for a millennia to come. I really like this expansion of Villagers. The shifting seasons makes the solo play, I think, a lot better. I feel like the other solo play was a little too random and maybe a little too quick. So I like that this expansion adds a few extra cards in the pile. So it takes more like six turns instead of like four, but also it kind of gives you a few other things to think about. Like, okay, I might want to go for the, the summer bonus is pretty good. So even though I kind of want to do this, I might want to hold onto this card. It's going to be really cool when the summer bonus comes along or the winter bonus lets me score extra silver or, or whatever it is. I like how it gives a little more complexity to the play. In case you've never played Villager in any form before, yeah, this game is really fun how you always start out and in the first turn you're like, I put two Villagers down. I only played six rounds and the first two or three turns are basically like, all right, I put a couple villagers down. My city looks pretty bad. Then you get to the last like two or three turns and you're like, Poof, then you throw down hundreds of points all at once. It's just a, a great feeling at the end of the game to see your city just sort of explode. So that's it for this solo villagers, shifting seasons on monastery mode playthrough. If you enjoyed it, of course, hit the like button down below. It really helps the channel out. Also, you can subscribe if you want to see more playthroughs like this, some solos, some with people, some reviews, and also some how to play videos. See ya.